Okay, so I'm going to try to explain some ideas I have about storing reputation uh, using the libtorrent DHT and BitTorrent files. So I think um, um, that we can use the DHT to. So the DHT, you need to think about it as a table, right? You know, you have a table, and in this side you have keys. And then you have some values, right? Simple key value store. Uh, the one thing is the DHT, these keys and values are stored in many, many different computers. Um, I'm still not aware of the limit of the value, but I wouldn't abuse it. Uh, and I would put uh, as little information here as possible. And if we need to store more stuff than the value here, would point to a torrent file that would, would uh, allow you to download the file that has the data you're looking for. So the, the table serves as an index and uh, let's see how I, I think of using this. So uh, usually these keys, well these keys are um, uh, numbers, 160 bit numbers, which are basically SHA-1 hashes. Um, so if you want to have a key, let's say, of uh, Open Bazaar reputation of user, and then you have like a user ID here. You hash this stuff, you have a number, and that's going to be your key, your reputation key to find that key. And then in the value, so I have here my rep, in the value, I think here. I should have uh, maybe a little bit of metadata that I can fit in here, some metadata, um, if it's even worth worth it having some metadata there uh, for a fast retrieval of information, maybe like the last time this was updated and if uh, possible even a reputation score there that can be verified. Um, using uh, some stuff I'll, I'll tell you later. And then the most important thing here would be the info hash number of a torrent. This is basically another SHA-1 that can be used uh, in the DHT to find um, other users that may have a .torrent file. Now this .torrent file would have inside, so this is, it would point to a file that has your reputation. And this is pointed by the torrent. So all participants in, in OpenBazaar, when they browse a store and they want to know what the reputation is, or a seller, or a notary, they would basically start making requests to this key and fetching the torrent, downloading the file and seeding the reputation file. So the more people that are interested in you, the more seeds you will have for your reputation. Um, and then we should you know, make sure that even if you're not that interesting, um, those nodes that you get to connect to in OpenBazaar are notified of this file so they can help seed it in so that your reputation file can last forever. Um, so let's now uh, talk about the reputation file. So I think the reputation file, uh, in my mind, it looks like a like a JSON file. And um, towards the beginning, it should have some metadata that summarizes your reputation, like a reputation summary. And this reputation summary um, uh, should of course uh, be sh should not be easy to to forge so that you don't fool other users, and um, it should probably be accompanied uh, by a hash of the last uh, reputation entry here. So this would be a section where you have like a reputation summary with your with your trust score, 
or what I like to call the Dignitas score. Um, and maybe some other information about you, uh, just to make sure that we are here reading the actual guide, so that this matches the user ID here, maybe your your store address, uh, something related to to Open Bazaar in this case. Uh, I want to think this first as a, a specific case, but I think this technology could be used for other reputation systems. And then we have here our reputation log, and this I imagine it's a list like a blockchain actually, but it's a trust chain. <laughs> so where the first element is your last transaction, all the information to that last, related to the last transaction, and um, it gets hashed, and this thing should be signed by, by the, the, the parties involved in the transaction so that you cannot easily forge this so that other users can verify this stuff and and um, as they verify this stuff they will get the user IDs of the people involved and they can also go and fetch their reputations and then things can be validated and then you can do stuff like that the layer of of reputation that that uh, you mentioned in your slides uh, uh, Dr. Washington um, so this object here I think should contain all the steps uh, in the transaction the moment where the contract was seated when the multisig address was created when it was funded and then the outcome whether the funds did go to the seller or they got returned um, if there was a conflict or not and then uh, Dr. Washa said that maybe we should separate the reviewing uh, and the, the trust um, and here I, I suppose uh, this should also include information about, the, uh, about the, the, the transaction in the blockchain so that can also be checked so that you know that this wasn't uh, BS. And then this stuff has to somehow be signed uh, with the public keys of, of the participants in this transaction. And, the, the, and then uh, this gets hashed, and, and this number, if it's the last transaction, it gets updated here on the reputation summary. And you will always... Uh, make the hash a function of, of the last of the last um, uh, transaction information so that you have a similar um, heuristic like in the blockchain where you where, where you, you would have to rewrite all the other ones uh, to, to fake the last one um, perhaps it's not even necessary but it could be nice so anyways I, that, that's all I have for now in ideas I think uh, this might work um, but I'm sure you, maybe you're already poking holes through it and that's what I want to, wanted to make this video. Um, let me know if it's not too clear or if you have any questions. Thanks.